Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus with Rabbi Schneider. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and today on the program, we're going to learn about miracles. The miracle of life, it can't be overstated. In fact, it's so hard to put into words the moment when a child enters the world and takes their first breath. And today, Rabbi Schneider, he shares the true story of a young woman in the Bible who never thought that she would ever become a mom. And you're going to love reliving her expression of joy and praise because the birth of Samuel, it was an absolute miracle. And as a dad myself, I can easily relate to her happiness. And from the series Hannah's Song, Rabbi Schneider titled today's message, Message, miracles, the art of God. I began in season one talking about the history, the context from which Hannah sung her song or spoke her song in 1 Samuel chapter 2. What had happened was that Hannah was unable to conceive. And she went to the temple praying unto the Lord, unto the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, give me a son, open my womb, I'm barren, remove this from me. And as she was in the temple praying, Eli the priest saw her praying there. But the way that it appeared to Eli was that this woman, Hannah, that was praying, he thought she was under the influence of alcohol because Hannah's lips were moving But no sound was coming out because she was praying from her heart silently. And even though her lips were corresponding to the words in her heart, it wasn't out loud to be heard. And so Eli rebuked her and Hannah said to him, no, sir, no, no, I'm not drunk. I'm praying. My heart is grieved. I haven't been able to conceive. And when Eli the priest heard her deep anguish and her grief, he blessed her. Well, what happens next? Hannah conceives. And when she conceives, after the child was old enough, she brought the child, who was the prophet Samuel, the boy she named Samuel, she brought him to the temple and dedicated him there. And that's the context that we pick up the narrative in. Now, before we launch into where we left off in season one, which is verse number six of chapter two, I want to point out the fact that today within the church, we have a custom of bringing our infant children to the church early after they've been born and dedicating the child to the Lord there within the congregation, in the church building oftentimes. This tradition is taken directly out of the book, beloved ones, of 1 Samuel. Listen as I read now, showing you how infant dedication today that is practiced in the Christian community is taken right out of the Hebrew scriptures from this specific episode in the book of 1 Samuel chapter one. Now, when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with a three-year-old bull and one ephah of flour and a jug of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. Again, I just want to make the point that the ceremony of dedicating our children to the Lord in a church building or in some type of facility with a pastor or a priest, that right or that tradition is taken right out of the verse that I'm reading. It's taken from the book of 1 Samuel where Hannah dedicated Samuel to the Lord when she brought him to Eli the priest in the house of the Lord. So it's important to understand our Hebrew roots, beloved, because again, infant dedication comes from this. So let's continue on. She brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh, although the child was young. And they slaughtered the bull and brought the boy to Eli. She said, speaking to Eli here, Oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. Because remember, Hannah was in the temple there praying to the Lord months earlier, bequesting of the Lord to give her a child. Remember, Eli thought she was drunk. And when he realized she was grieving, he blessed her. She left and conceived. So she reminds him, I'm the one that was here that you rebuked and you thought I was drunk and you prayed for me to have a child when you understood I wasn't drunk, but just grieving and crying out in anguish for my soul. And look, I'm back. The Lord 
answered my prayer. The Lord answers prayer, beloved. Not only did he open Hannah's womb, but he's the God of miracles today. Let me tell you, the miracles of God never stop. Hannah, when she conceived, when the Lord had opened her womb after all this time of barrenness that she had been experiencing, she didn't think that it was just random. She came back to the house of the Lord and dedicated her child to the Lord because she knew that her womb being opened to be able to give birth to Samuel was a gift from Hashem. And you and I need to cultivate that same habit in our lives of giving thanks for all the things that the Lord is doing for us, recognizing their miracles. And the miracles of your God will never run out. I want you to know that the miracles of God are inexhaustible. And even as he's been faithful to you and I in days past, he's still the same God. There's a new miracle for you. There's a new miracle that's being birthed into your life even now. So look up from where your redemption comes. Rejoice continually, I say, and you will overcome every obstacle. As we read these stories in Scripture, beloved, we're not simply reading history. We're reading of the living God who's doing the same thing today that he did in years gone by. Paul said in the New Testament that the things that are written in the Hebrew Bible, in the Tanakh, are not only written for the children of Israel, but they're written for you and I as well, for us upon whom the end of the ages has come. So I just want to encourage you today. Our God's a God of miracles, the same God that opened Hannah's womb, is doing miracles in the lives of all his children continuously and everlastingly because God is continually bringing forth new miracles in our life. And so once again, she spoke to Eli. She said, I'm the one that stood before you. I was barren and you prayed for me and we prayed to the Lord. And look in verse number 27, for this boy I prayed and the Lord, yud heh vav -Hey, the covenant God of Israel has given me my petition, which I asked of him. So I have also dedicated him to the Lord. As long as he lives, she said, he is dedicated to the Lord. And they worship together the Lord there. So it's great when we are taking part in dedicating a child to recognize that it's not without precedence. If you'll forgive me if I share with you the most humorous story that I've ever experienced in dedicating a child. This is going back years ago, but a beloved couple in the congregation I was pastoring at the time had a little infant boy that was uh, had been constipated and it was a challenge and a problem and you know there was a lot of pain involved and the child was suffering. They brought the child to be dedicated and as soon as I lifted up the child to the Lord, his bowels were loosed and he was cured of his constipation right there and right then on the spot. And the parents you know, noted it and really rejoiced in it. And they didn't just take it for granted that, oh, it happened here or you know that it was some accident. They took it as a miracle from the Lord releasing this child child from the pain that the child was in and releasing the parents, hallelujah, of the burden. And so it is in this setting of dedicating Samuel, Hannah's child, to the Lord, to live for him as long as he was alive, and for Hannah to be a source of encouragement to him, to live his life for the Lord. It's in this setting that Hannah burst out in what is called in Scripture the Song of Hannah, are the song of Hannah. And she begins to praise God for who he is and for all he has done for her. If you're feeling despondent and you're feeling discouraged, beloved, the word of God is alive and it's living and it will lift you up. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus and Rabbi will be right back. But first we have an announcement about a new book from Rabbi. The Old Testament is more than a collection of traditions. Rather, it paints a rich and colorful picture of Jesus, proving that He is indeed the Messiah, drawing from Hebrew tradition, where prophecy is multidimensional, in Messianic prophecy revealed. Rabbi Kurt Schneider unpacks scripture that not only declares the future, but he reveals how the whole of scripture points to Christ. 
Call 800-777-7835 or visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com and be absolutely confident that Jesus is the Messiah. Messianic Prophecy Revealed. We're so excited about this book release. It really does build absolute confidence that the Old Testament points to Jesus as the Messiah. So get your copy today and now. Here is Rabbi with the rest of today's message. So let me read now verses number one through five of chapter two as Hannah, after dedicating Samuel, who became the great prophet Samuel in Israel, Let's read now how she goes into song and thanksgiving at his dedication. Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the God of Israel, in yud heh vav heh in the Lord. My mouth speaks boldly against my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is no one holy like Yahweh. Indeed, there was no one besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. Boast no more so very proudly. Do not let arrogance come out of your mouth, for the Lord is God. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and with him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are shattered, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full hire themselves out for bread. But those who are hungry cease to hunger. Even the barren give birth to seven. And she who has many children languishes. She continues, the Lord, yud Hey vav Hey, which are the four letters that compose God's sacred name, the covenant name of the God of Israel, whom Semitic scholars believe is pronounced a breathy, reverent, Yahweh, the Lord kills, she said in verse number six, and makes alive. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and rich. He brings low. He also exalts. Now, the point that needs to be stressed here is that the Hebraic concept of God is oftentimes much fuller than the concept of God that people have if they only read the New Testament. Because the New Testament didn't come out of a vacuum. The New Testament is rooted in the Hebrew Bible, the Bible that we're reading from right now. That's why Matthew 1 begins, this is the genealogy of Yeshua the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. From the very first verse of the New Testament, Matthew shows us it's rooted in the Hebrew Bible. So to understand who Yeshua is and who his father is, we have to understand the Hebrew Bible. And one of the things that we come to understand about God is that the children of Israel, the Hebrews that wrote the Hebrew Bible, they understood that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth below, Deuteronomy 4.39. You see, Hannah is saying here in verse number six, the Lord kills and makes alive. But the common Christian teaching today is, oh, the Lord would never kill. The Lord would never put somebody to death. The Lord would never judge somebody. The Lord would never make anything bad happen. Isn't that what many in the church think today? Isn't that the type of theology that we often hear being communicated from our pulpits. So this concept that many of us have been taught that because God is good, he would never bring judgment. Because God's good, he would never do anything to anybody that would make them hurt. That concept does not line up with the word of God. It's shallow, it's superficial, it's empty, and it is false. Listen to what Hannah said. Verse six, The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to Sheol and he raises up. The Lord makes poor and rich. He brings low and exalts. Think about Nebuchadnezzar. First, the Lord raised him up. Then when Nebuchadnezzar was raised up as king, he got proud. So what did God do? God brought judgment into his life. He made him become mentally ill. And in his mental illness, Nebuchadnezzar learned how weak 
and how dependent on the Lord he needed to be. And when he came to his senses because of the suffering that Yahweh brought on him, then the Lord raised Nebuchadnezzar back up to his kingship. And when Nebuchadnezzar was raised back up, he said, the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth below. And no one can stop him or say to him, what are you doing? You see, beloved, the Hebrew mind that we see reflected in the Hebrew scriptures through the entire portion of the Old Testament recognizes that the true God of the universe, the God of Israel, and the God and Father of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, is Lord in the heaven above and on the earth beneath. And listen, sometimes his judgments are his greatest mercy. Sometimes the judgment of God is simply a reflection of his love for us because without being judged, we wouldn't repent. But because he loves us so much, he brings judgment. And the judgment isn't because he doesn't love us, but rather it's because he does love us. That's why the book of Proverbs tells us that when we spare our children the rod, when we don't discipline them, we don't love them. Think about the apostle Paul. He said there was a messenger of Satan given him to torment him, to keep him from exalting himself. So this very messenger of Satan, Paul said, was actually a gift of the Lord to keep Paul from exalting himself so that Paul could stay right in the pocket of Hashem's anointing. I want you to get this, beloved one. Jesus said, salvation is of the Jews. Yeshua said to the woman of Samaria that believed in God, but didn't have a good understanding of who the God of Israel was, Yeshua said to a woman, you don't know what you're worshiping. And so today, many within our church, beloved, because we have not learned the Hebraic roots of our faith, we have a faulty theology. We don't understand what we're worshiping. God is sovereign. He's Adon Olam. He's master of the world. And this is what Hannah is proclaiming here. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to Sheol and he raises up. The Lord makes poor and rich. He brings low, he also exalts. And so I want to encourage you today. Let's trust in God's sovereignty in our lives. Everything that's happening in the world is moving towards God's ultimate intention, especially during the season that we're in during these days. So many things are happening. We've had thousands and thousands and thousands of deaths in the United States and all over the world from COVID-19. And people are wondering what's going on, where is God? But I wanna to say to you, he's God in heaven above and on the earth below. And he's got you, beloved child, right in his hand. He's loving you, he's protecting you. And as long as you and I stay humble, and walk before him with our hearts open in love, he's gonna bless us and give us victory through every storm. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus and the Bible teaching of Rabbi Schneider. Today's message, it's a good reminder that even though we go through times of suffering and sorrow, God truly does have a plan for our lives. So whatever you're going through, I just want to encourage you, submit your life to God's plan and his purposes right now. Just as we saw in Hannah's life, we never know where our faith, dedication, and our prayers will lead. So if you could use a little encouragement or prayer, just reach out to us today. You'll find us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And while you're there, consider partnering with us as we reach people all over the world with the uncompromising truths of God. Your gifts and prayers, they help us take God's word into places we could never reach without your support. And now here is Rabbi once again to share what's on his heart with you. There's a portion in God's word that I've really been putting myself under, asking the Lord to shepherd me into perfect obedience. It's the story of the rich young ruler that came to Jesus in Matthew 19. It's also repeated in Mark and Luke. And the rich young ruler says to Jesus, good teacher. Jesus says, why do you call me good? Only God's good. 
And then the rich young ruler said to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Yeshua said, keep all the commandments. The rich young ruler said, I've done all the commandments from my youth. He was a moral man. Then Yeshua said to him, now go and sell everything you have and you will inherit the kingdom of God. And the Bible says the rich young ruler went away sad because he wasn't able to surrender his possessions to the Lord. And the disciples were really like, wow, who can inherit the kingdom of God? Jesus said, what's impossible with man is possible with God. Beloved, we don't have to earn our salvation, but Jesus is calling for us to surrender. Will you surrender your finances to him? If you feel God leading you to take this step of faith today, then please give when you go online to discoveringthejewishjesus.com or by calling 800-777-7835. You can also send your generous financial donations in the mail by writing to us at Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan, 49228. These daily programs, they're made possible through your voluntary donations and your faithful prayers. Thank you so much for valuing Rabbi's teaching and wanting to see others come to know Jesus as their Messiah. And as our way of saying thank you for your gift of any amount, we'll send you the latest copy of our insightful and our encouraging newsletter. And if you sign up as a new monthly partner, we'll send you an additional gift of appreciation, an authentic shofar that's been handcrafted in Israel. And you know, one of the ways that we can see God's hand in everything is through prophecy. And to help you get a better understanding of Messianic prophecy, let me encourage you to purchase Rabbi's new book, Messianic Prophecy Revealed. And that word Messianic, it just means relating to the Messiah. Jesus didn't just make an appearance in the last half of the Bible, so discover him on the pages of the Old Testament today. The book is titled Messianic Prophecy Revealed, and it's available when you visit DiscoveringTheJewishJesus.com. Now let's close today's program with a special blessing from Rabbi. In the book of Numbers, chapter 6, the Lord gave instructions to Moses and Aaron to speak this blessing over his people. And the Lord said, When you speak these words over my people, I will place my name on them and bless them. Receive the impartations of the Lord's blessings. Yahweh, Rechech Yahweh, Vayishma Recha. Yair Yahweh, Penave Lecha, Vihunecha. Isa Yahweh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance. And the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. If you'd like more information about Discovering the Jewish Jesus, visit our website at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You'll find our broadcast schedule, podcast links, teaching notes, and so much more. And while you're there, let our prayer team pray for you. Matthew 18, 19 says, if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. Our prayer team lifts up each individual request before the Lord. And then, as God answers your prayer request, or if God has touched your life through discovering the Jewish Jesus, send us your testimony. We want to rejoice with you. Submit your prayer request or testimony at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can also connect with us on your social media outlets to stay up to date on the content you love. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube. Connecting with Discovering the Jewish Jesus has never been easier. 
I'm Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Be sure to join us again tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider discusses how we should comprehend God's authority. That's coming up Thursday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.